Chris Petra here. Hey, welcome everybody. We're having a fantastic time. We're doing figures this week. Figures are a great way to add excitement to your watercolor paintings. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to just cover the real basic essentials of doing some really beautiful figures in your watercolor paintings. And the first step to that is just doing some fun compositional paintings of figures uh, on their own, maybe three, four, five times just like this here in this picture you'll see this is the finished painting we did of our figures if we do these three four five times before we do a painting and then we go in and do our painting we're gonna have a great result because we're gonna practice all the fundamentals of our figure painting these are two figures they're conjoined together side by side this is preferable to painting one figure by itself, which tends to look cut out and pasted. We'll cover that in this video. So stay tuned. Stick with us here. Follow this uh, video all the way to the end. You'll see all the steps, all the methods covered, A to Z, uh, on how to create some beautiful figure work in your paintings, your watercolor paintings. Um, these can be large in your painting, or you can make these small and, and uh, diminished in size in the distance in your paintings doesn't matter however confident you feel in your figure painting but the main thing is you practice this three or four different times and you'll get the hang of it of how to get some nice colors some light and shadow practicing blending your figures together and uh, you'll have it so stay tuned glad you joined along here I appreciate that Everyone that subscribes and everyone that comes along every week here on my channel, I appreciate you very much. And so uh, we'll get started in just a second. This is the finished painting. I'll remove this here and maybe we'll zoom in just a little more. You can work right from this painting right here. So you can do a screen capture or just hit pause and work from this. And I'll just make sure that we are uh, zoomed and focused in correctly. Let's do this here. I just want to make sure I'm okay that looks good so we're focused correctly. There we have it. Okay we'll start in just a second with our drawing, pencil drawing, and then we'll get right into the painting portion and we'll cover all the steps you need to know how to get a beautiful uh, composition started like this. Practice this, you know, five, four or five times. And then you're ready to go in and put these figure paintings into your watercolors, your finished paintings. All right, hey, we're back again. We're getting started. Uh, you saw the finished uh, painting we did of the figures, the wonderful figures we did here just for fun. We're going to do some uh, loose uh, figure work in watercolor. This way you can uh, take figures, put them into your watercolors, feel confident. You've tried them a few times, you've painted them a few times, you've uh, tried to sketch them out, get some ideas down, and uh, we're going to cover that now. So let's get started. We're going to do just some simple pencil sketches first. Then we'll uh, do the painting portion over the top of our pencil sketches. So this is um, uh, just some rough watercolor paper, Fabriano, uh, rough uh, extra white paper. And uh, you can use any type of watercolor paper here, um, student grade paper, professional paper, Arches, Fabriano, Buckingford. You can pick your favorite watercolor paper you like to use. You can use sketchbook paper. Sometimes you can buy those uh, really nice uh, hardbound um, uh, sketchbooks. You can buy the uh, spiral bound sketchbooks. I, I like to buy the uh, spiral bound sketchbooks by uh, Canson. Uh, C-A-N-S-O-N. -S Canson's make, make really nice uh, watercolor sketchbooks. So you can just do some sketch work and some uh, compositions in some uh, sketchbook uh, type uh, format. This way you can 
save that, have it as like a guide when you go back, you can look at your, your paintings, your, your uh, compositions, some of your practice work. So here we're just doing some practice work. We're going to practice some figures. Let's get started. Uh, again, these are the types of figures you can put into watercolor paintings. You can make these figures that we're going to do now very small, or you can make them large in your paintings. It's up to you. So it's just a matter of uh, make, you know, scaling them according to your painting. If you want some figures in the distance in your painting, you just make them smaller. And if you want to make them more of a prominent part of your painting, you make them larger. That's really the, the real basics of it. Nothing too complex. So let's start off. We'll make uh, maybe a like a, a male figure, a man maybe uh, with a cap on, uh, maybe a nice uh, brown suit on and a little tie. Let's, let's try it out. Okay, so let's start out with a I like to start out with a, a border so that I have a, a, a clear border of where I'm working. So here we'll just do a border like that. That's our border for our paper now. Um, this is just a little tidbit of information uh, as an artist. Um, you're going to find that when you're painting and drawing in watercolor, a lot of times things things can uh, shape up where you wind up having a large rectangle like this and then a small amount of information like this uh, in, for a drawing and a painting let's say. So let's say we were drawing some figures here So, if we were drawing some figures like this, it would be much more uh, exciting and interesting if we make our figures larger within this rectangle. Unless you're making these figures in a distant portion of your, your painting. So you could take these, you know, this size figures, if you're making a larger painting where you do maybe a, a street scene like this, and you want some people standing by, let's say the, let's say you have some street signs here, there might be some people standing by the buildings here, if you're doing a, let's say a street scene. That's fine, but if you're doing a composition like we're doing now, we're going to want to make these figures a lot larger. So we're going to want to make them like this. So if we're just doing a loose idea of uh, our, we want to make them large within our rectangle here. So let's make sure we do that. Let's make our figures large here in our composition. We're practicing. Okay, let's start out. I'm going to start out with a cap. Okay, we have a, a cap. And we're going to do a nice uh, suit here. And we got some. The belt, belt area, the waistline here. And we're going to do the some shoes here at the bottom. 
and that's all. Very simple as you can see. Then let's do another figure next next to this. It's always nice to have like a figure next to another figure. It kind of makes it look more. Um, it feels less cut cut out and pasted down when you have an, a figure next to another. So let's have another figure here. We'll have a woman here. And she's gonna she's gonna be here. And if you need to erase, you can just see that I'm doing a very loose, very loose drawing here. I'm just getting the flow of things here. There's the, the dress. And this doesn't have to be perfect. Have fun with this. That's the main thing. Have fun with this. Get a rhythm to your drawing. You know, I'm doing like a rhythm, the shoulders down through the hips, the midsection, and then the hips over here, and then the flow of the dress. So get some good rhythm and flow to your uh, drawings. You'll have much better time doing that. And then we just have just some very suggestive uh, eyes and nose, mouth, just a little touch of that. And I think this looks really good. And, and let's do a little more detail. Let's do a tie. That looks good too. A nice tie details things a little bit. And uh, I think we are set. Maybe I'll do a little change here. Let's do this. Maybe he has a bag here. This might be a briefcase or and that's fine. And I think you're going to see that this is really going to and you're going to have a fun time with this. No real uh, stress with this at all. You're just having fun. Very loose feeling. Doesn't have to be perfect. You can see this is not perfect. You can erase a little bit maybe. But you can see my sketching is very it's very loose. And always remember when you're drawing contour drawing and sketching it always looks better once you're painting over top you'll always find that your sketching your pencil drawings are going to look a little off don't worry about it no matter how perfect you think I mean there's been times where I you know I just pencil draw things and I, I think that it doesn't look good but once I get painting on it it looks m just much better so don't worry about your pencil drawing too much. Get down what you feel is the general idea of your drawing, your figures. It doesn't, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't get stressed over it. Don't keep uh, you know, sketching and erasing and sketching and erasing and sketching. Don't do that. Just get it down. You know, if you have to, if you have to, you know, you can you can do your fundamentals maybe, like when you start out and you just know your figure. You know, your head, 
and then your you know your body and your legs so you just kind of maybe get you get that idea first and you kind of just sketch that out before you start drawing this this drawing kind of get a feel you know the body's you know upper por upper portion of the body's about half the legs are about halfway and the head on top so if you get that basic um, little bit of foundational like you know sometimes people might draw a head and then they draw a body and then they draw small legs like this you know that could be a problem or someone might draw a body like this and then legs really long like this that also can be an issue but if you kind of remember halfway halfway and then the head on top you're pretty good so you can go half upper body half lower body and then the head on top you kind of have the basic idea of it there's also tons of books out there tons of videos you can research I'll go into more detail too on drawing the figure in the future so I always say, you know, subscribe to my channel. I'm going to go into further detail on figure drawing, portraits, so forth. But, you know, here we're just doing some loose figure drawings. Let's have fun with it. Just recall, you know, approximate dimensions of things. Lower body halfway, upper body halfway, and then head on top, and you're, you're pretty much set. All right, so let's take a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll uh, start painting this and have a great time at it. All right, we are back. Everyone ready? Let's get started. We're going to do some painting here. Before we get going, let's just, I always want to mention, hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Um, we have a great channel here. We do watercolors, everything, watercolors, seascapes, landscapes, figure painting, uh, we do street scenes, flowers, we do it all here. So it's everything watercolor here at my channel, Chris Petri, uh, on YouTube. All you have to remember is if you hit that notification bell, which is right down below here to the right of the uh, screen, you'll see a red subscribe button if you hit that button, as well as the notification bell, little bell sign. And then you just click on all notifications this way whenever my video comes out you'll be alerted right away you can check it out check out the first you know minute or two you'll always see my finished painting right at the start of the video so you'll kind of see what we're working on if you love it you like it boom you start out you watch the video and you, you work along with us if you don't like the video no problem next week or the week after we might be doing something more your speed that you like to do something else some other inf you know uh, you might like landscapes and you really don't like figure painting well that's fine we're going to do that so maybe in the next couple weeks we'll do landscapes so we're always changing every week so that everyone gets a chance to to do the paintings they like to do so here we're this week we're doing uh, some gorgeous beautiful figure painting these are figures that you can put into your paintings you can make them real small and diminish them make them really small in your painting uh, in the far distance or if you want to make them a, a more prominent part of your painting you can put these type of figures in the front of your paintings in the foreground uh, whatever type of uh, painting you might be doing whether it's a seascape a landscape street scene what have you so let's get started let's do some painting and again I appreciate everyone that is coming along and subscribing and uh, painting along with us here and drawing and painting we're having a fun time each week we change up our process every week but the thing is we always do the same techniques the same methods uh, ongoing every week here at my channel so if you're watching every week painting along with us following along uh, you'll get the basic fundamental information you need to do watercolor painting drawing and painting and you'll become a much better watercolor artist if you're constantly following this channel because you're going to be doing the same methods the same techniques so I don't change my methods and my techniques I use the same all the time and that's going to be for your benefit you'll do the same thing over and over and over and then again we always know repetition is the mother of skill so if you're repeating something over and over and over you will eventually master that so 
The rep repetition is the mother of skill. You'll have skill when you repeat things over and over and over. So let's keep going here. Let's start out. We're going to do a brown suit, a nice beautiful brown suit here. Let's get some brown and let's not keep it just one color. Let's go brown. Let's make some burnt sienna in there too. Burnt umber for brown. Burnt sienna, a little of that reddish brown. Raw umber, a little raw umber in there too. Maybe a little bit of touch of uh, cerulean blue just to have some warm and cool. Always we want to paint with warm and cool so we don't get uh, looking too uh, one dimensional. Okay, so let's start out. I'm using a number six Raphael brush. I think a number six is a perfect brush to do this entire painting, just one brush. Watercolor brush, it's a sable. And you can kind of see, I'm just placing the paint. I'm changing things around a little bit. So you can see I don't... Let's go with some French ultramarine blue. Let's let's sort of separate that. The French ultramarine blue down here, the darkest dark, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So we can get a nice dark. And that's the That's the briefcase. So we have a nice briefcase. This gentleman's maybe coming from work and he has his briefcase with him. And then we'll go back. And we'll get some more of that burnt umber, burnt sienna. We'll do his pants. And you can see, very, very simple color scheme here. We'll do some shadowing too. We'll say that the light, let's always remember, let's always get our light source worked out right from the beginning so we'll just pretend we make a little light insignia lights coming from this direction and then that sets our our light pattern and shadow patterns okay there we have it Uh, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. Let's make that nice dark for some shoes. Cobalt blue, purple, a little shadowing. So you can see I did some shadowing here with some purple and cobalt blue. Let's continue. Burn umber, burn sienna. We're going to use those same colors. Have no fear. We're using the same colors and there's a very, you know, we're using a very limited palette here. Burnt Umber, Burnt Sienna for the suit. Now, let's introduce some Lizard and Crimson. Ultramarine Violet, which is purple, for 
for the uh, the woman's dress here. We're going to have, and we're going to amalgamate those two together. We're going to fuse the two figures together. You don't have to worry about being fancy about that or critical about that area or f fussing over it. You're just going to blend the two colors together just like that. No one's going to be really focused on that area. And then we'll start working into the female figure here with her dress. She has a beautiful dress on here. And uh, we'll put a little bit of uh, the same colors as the suit mixed in with the alizarin crimson and purple which is ultramarine violet, just so we have a little bit of a tie-in, a little bit of a, uh, we're harmonizing colors. We don't want to, now, since we're doing a beautiful dress, let's splash. We're going to do some splashing technique to get some, maybe some flowery type, uh, So we're just going to do some shadowing under here by the waist. There we go. Some more splashing. Purple, ultramarine violet. That's Windsor Newton ultramarine violet I use all the time. Same purple I use all the time is ultramarine violet by uh, Windsor Newton. I find that to be the best uh, a violet color that I've found uh, with watercolors paints. And then we're going to do that shadowy color over on this side here. And then some flesh colors. Let's let's use the burnt sienna and for the flesh colors here for the hands. And then we'll use our burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue for the darks. Let's let's do that for the hair. And there you can see we're having a fun time doing this, no stress. Some shadowing, some light, you can see the light. And again, some splashing for the feeling of some flowery type. flowery type uh, textures. And again we use some burnt sienna, burnt umber for the legs, the bottom of the legs, and by the dress here. And 
and then some more you can see I'm splashing on some more intense colors let's use those intense colors purples in the uh, purple ultramarine violet Just some random colors splashed on and here out in the light on the this side you're going to see more of the white paper and then over here you're going to see more shadows. All right so we're going to take a break just about now you know we're sort of we've been working quite a bit We will put in some more shadows. We're going to finish up the male figure here, but you can kind of see we have a, a really pleasant looking um, figures, two figures here together. And um, we'll finish up. We'll uh, get the rest of the um, tie, the shirt, the hat, the face of the male figure. Our female figure is almost done. We'll maybe do a little more um, work to the uh, face here. Maybe some lips and eyes. We'll do a little shadowing. But I really think this is fun. You'll get a great idea of um, just adding in some figures to your paintings. And uh, no stress, no worries. We'll cover it all right here. If you come back in just a few seconds, we're going to finish up. We'll, we'll definitely um, get into the details of shadowing. We're going to do some more shadowing here. We haven't done our shadows to a great degree, so we're going to do that a little more, some more shadowing. We'll finish up this male figure here as well, and we'll finish up uh, the final details here, really. We have, there's always uh, things we can do to make it look better. Some mystery to this here, you know, it might be a bag, might be a coat. Who knows? But uh, let's let's come back in just a few minutes. We'll start working out the last bits of our painting here, and uh, we'll have a fun time at it. Okay, we'll be right back. All right, we are back, and we are gonna finish up our painting here. We already have quite a bit done here. You can see, so we're having an, an enjoyable time here. We're doing figures. These are the type of figures you can put into your paintings, uh, your watercolor paintings. You can shrink them down, minimize them to make them smaller in the distance, or you can enlarge them and you can make them in the foreground of your painting. Doesn't matter, it's up to you. But once you practice this a number of times, maybe let's say five, six, seven, maybe try this exercise three or four times, however many times you need to kind of get the overall feel of doing a couple figures together, join together. They look really good when you do a couple figures together, sort of, you know, conjoined together. Um, makes it feel more close and, and interesting if you less cut out and paste it on the paper. So if you can uh, uh, attach your figures together when you're doing watercolor paintings, especially with watercolors, if you attach some figures together here and there as you're painting them, it looks so much better. I've seen many professional artists over and over and over as I look at books, I look at DVDs, I look at YouTube videos and I watch and I say a lot of great watercolor artists, the top pros, they tend to join their figures together a lot of times if they're going to put them into their paintings. They tend to group them together and join them together at the shoulders and at the uh, midsection areas of their um, figures. So just something to keep in mind. I'm just telling you my experience of what I see out there. hope you'll uh, not take offense of that. So let's continue on here. Let's go with our, let's go with a um, cobalt blue shirt for our male figure here. Okay, so we're, we're going to do a cobalt blue shirt here. And then maybe cerulean blue on the left side. Maybe there's some light over here that sort of... Maybe there's some light over here that's... 
catching this side of the shirt makes it look lighter. This is more in shadow. Like that. Looks fine. Maybe a little bit of warm and cool. Add a little bit of the burnt sienna, burnt umber to the shirt. Blend it in a little bit. And we can put a little shadow under the tie here, like that. Looks good. And then a little more flesh tone on the face there. Maybe he'll have a matching hat, burnt umber, burnt sienna. A little bit of a cerulean blue just to And then we'll just make sure we lighten that up a little bit on the top there of the hat. And once that uh, the um, face dries, we'll add a little shadowing underneath the nose and the eyes. And um, French ultra green blue. Burnt sienna, French ultra green blue. Just a little bit of dark here by the shoes. And maybe we'll take some cerulean blue and just go around the dress here. And what that does is that that just sort of uh, that accentuates this light here. And some more blue here. Just do some splashing. Have fun with your watercolors. Definitely uh, splash around occasionally. Get some splashes on there to uh, give it some interesting textural ideas and I think this is really looking good so far. So uh, let's do a little more shadowing over here. We'll take some French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and let's make a little shadow here. That's by the uh, by the suit. The light's coming from this direction, so there's going to be a little bit of a shadow here. Just like that, so we want to capture that. Blend that in. Just a little bit is fine. A little bit here. I'm just going to put a little shadowing under the nose. A little shadowing on the left side of the faces just to uh, Accentuate the light.
Yeah, maybe we'll do an interesting tie. Let's do a little stripes here. There we go. We'll add some stripes to that tie. Splash a little bit of water on there maybe. A little bit of cerulean blue over here just to uh, tie it in to the uh, to the rest of the painting. And again, some more splashing, have some fun with this. It's a composition, you're going to try this four or five times, six times, ten times, you know. That's why you're going to splash and have a good time at it. You're going to practice this a few times. You're not. This is not a finished painting, really. But this is just a practice run at some of the figures you may eventually put into your watercolor paintings. Your uh, seascapes, your landscapes, street scenes, what have you. So you're not going to worry too much. You're going to have fun with it. And again, repetition is the mother of skill. So the more you repeat this painting, the better you'll get at it. And the more you'll have a fun time and a successful time at it when you're going to put it into your finished painting. Okay, and some Burnt Umber and uh, Alizarin Crimson with a touch of blue, purpley kind of color. And a little bit of shadowing, darker shadows under here, under the hat. And again, have fun with this. And you can see I added that blue to accentuate the light, maybe a little more up here. Kind of looks interesting. Some areas of light. And I just add some splashing to practice, really, and to just add some interesting effects to the painting. Okay, we are pretty much uh, completed. A lot of fun we had here, just doing some simple loose figures. Uh, a man and a, a woman together, they're... Uh, walking they have um maybe it's a street scene the the man is maybe coming from work 
and uh, he's got his uh, briefcase with him, and uh, he might ha his, it's maybe his wife or his girlfriend or his sister or his mom, and they're just together walking. We fuse the two figures together to make it look more pleasing, less cut out and pasted. Sometimes when you paint one figure by itself, it looks tends to look a little cut out and pasted. You take two figures and you fuse them together like so. Like that, you fuse them together and it looks much more pleasing. Has a, a really like a nice uh, feel of um, togetherness and uh, less of that cut out, cut and pasted kind of look, which uh, tends to look a little bit unpleasant. So. Again, please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to my channel. And uh, we're doing great videos every week. Watercolor, everything watercolor. We do figures, we do landscapes, seascapes, boats, street scenes, everything watercolor. Come on by every week. Subscribe. This way you kind of know when we're making our video, whether it's uh, on the weekend or usually it's on the weekends we make our videos. And uh, you'll have a fun time with us. You practice up. Your skills will get tremendously better as a watercolor artist. So we'll see you on the next video. And for now, happy painting.